if your eyes got tired of continuous assembling of QDX digital transceivers, one after the other, version one, version three, version four still in the bag, it means it's time to take a break and go for something more simple with bigger components to solder to, yet very useful and nice project. And this is QRP Labs QRP Dummy Load. It's not just a dummy load, it's a smart dummy load. Stay tuned. The bag contains 21 kilo ohm, one watt resistors, a cap, a diode, a connector, and a PCB. It's comprised of two parts and it came in one piece. The user manual advises there is a cut along the join. Just snap them apart along the scored join. Gloves, I think, are necessary. The PCB is pretty hard material. It could be sharp edges and you may injure your fingers, so. All right, so far so good. Soldering of the lower PCB was fun and easy. Now I need to install the upper PCB on top of all these resistors. It means all the 20 loose ends should protrude through the 20 holes in the upper PCB, like this. Uh, yeah. It seems it's mission impossible. No way to align all these ends at the same time, being equally spread and to go into the holes of the upper PCB. So one of the Murphy's Law says, if in doubt, read the manual. And the assembly instructions of a very well written manual offers us a fantastic solution. Chapter 3.5 Trim resistor wires to fit to the top PCB. That's a brilliant idea. Instead of having this bush-like collection of ends, we trim. The trick is that with different length of the wires in each ropes, you only need to align four wires at a time with the holes on the top PCB and this is quite easy. All right, so voila. The QRP dummy load case. Freshly baked. Congratulations. All right, guys. So I just finished the assembly of the QRP Labs dummy load. The last thing to do now is this 3D printed box. I designed it myself, printed on my 3D printer. And here it is. It's tailor-made for this construction. Creating a box. I wanted it to be, you know, as less as possible different screws bolts parts lids and whatever so in the end of the day i've designed it kind of a monolithic there's no two parts of the box it's just one part and one tiny lid the 3d printed box has got rounded edges just to make it more you know feel nice edges around it as from outside as from inside but since uh, these are rounded up from inside too i decided to grind off the sharp edges of the pcb boards on one end just in order to make it you know fit more snugly if you want to measure a power or actually a voltage so here's the point to connect the multi-tester and i've done this i let the wire go through one of these holes I didn't want the wire go like this and touching the resistors because these resistors can get warm or probably hot 
they didn't add the power of 10 watts I applied from my Alacraft KX2. So, but still, okay, it's rated for 20 watts, maybe at 20 watts, the resistors might get pretty hot and then they might, you know, melt the wire. We don't want this to happen. When the wire goes, you know, through the surface of PCB, then it's pretty safe. The construction just slides into the box smoothly with the wire coming from the lower part of it. Here we have the washer nut and we have a nut. Tighten it up. All right, not to over tighten, but so. Now it sits firm, doesn't move here. Since there's no two parts of the box, uh, all, all monolithic, the price for this comfort to pay is that uh, first you have to install the the board then only you can install the tiny banana connectors for the multi-tester probes when i do this i will have to solder these wires onto the connectors it does not get any hot so i decided to make the box closed no ventilation holes nothing i mean it's uh, i think it's gonna be okay okay so it's done contacts are in place wire soldered up the last thing to do is just to put the lid on there's no screws for the lid either as for the any rest of the box it just you know clicks in and it sits if the lid gets loose within a time you know probably it's a good idea then to put a drop of glue here and a drop of glue here and leave it you know in case you know you need to open just you would open it up still but it with the drop of glue it will keep you know firmly and for forever i hope there will be no need to open this box up again anytime soon all right guys so now the assembly is done the most interesting fun part testing for the test experiment we've got 20 watt QRP lapse dummy load in my designed 3d printed box very nice job we've got Elecraft KX2 transceiver we've got multi-tester to measure the voltage and we've got nano VNA to measure the frequency response of this little dummy load across the ham radio bands. Let's start with measuring the resistance of the box. Is it still 50 ohms after I squeezed it into this box? <laughs> Let's check it out. All right. 50 ohms point two. 0.1 50 ohms point 0.1 all right great it's really 50 ohms demi load i've done calibration of for my nano vna with the stock short cable to include the cable into the uh, all the calculations so now let's see this is 50 ohms load from the nano vna kit and uh, uh, i've set the frequency from 1 megahertz to 60 megahertz for the first measurement and we see flat response or, or across all the range of the frequencies with the SWR being 1.13 now let's use the same cable just replace this 50 ohm load with our demi load we actually see the same nice picture the same flat SWR across all the range from 1 megahertz to 60 megahertz with the 1.1 SWR and with the Smith chart sitting in the middle no reactances it's all okay uh, let's try to measure the VHF range let's make it like from starting 130 megahertz and stop at like 150 megahertz to include all right so and now here we see something weird we see the reactants in the beginning getting to be inductive reactants we see big dip 
at 290 megahertz of frequency demi load being resonant and then it skyrockets as the are skyrockets and then if we go to the frequency of ham radio like 430 the swr is 2.8 and here we see the capacitive reactance it was inductive first now it's capacitive something's wrong uh, maybe these connectors make influence you know could be maybe the connector it's itself not designed for vhf even it's b b and c i don't know so if if you know guys please leave your comments in the comment section but it's obvious that this dummy load not very useful on the vhf just for checking let's try just the cable with a nano vna load of 50 ohms on the same frequency range from 130 megahertz to 450 switch it quickly so we connect this load and look with this 50 ohms load here the stock load from the nano vna kit we have a perfect perfect flat swr with a perfect meaning of 1.0 from the frequency of 130 megahertz until 450 megahertz no problems at all keeping a hand on on the cable doesn't matter it's 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 no no problems so this proves that our demi load does not work really on on vhf and uhf frequencies now the most interesting part i've said in the beginning this is a smart demi load why because it can measure the peak voltage of your rf power on the 50 ohms of load so if we take a look at the schematics this is our demi load 21 kilo ohm resistors in parallel here's the rectifying diode and the capacitor and on this point we can measure the voltage the peak voltage in order to know the power we need to use a formula accordingly to the formula the power equals the peak voltage multiplied by itself and divided by 100 and then you will have the power approximate power this schematic and this design of course cannot and does not bring precise you know, value. Elecraft KX2 transceiver can uh, provide us with from zero to 10 watts of output. We are on 40 meters. It's in FM mode just to provide the carrier and we transmit. So you see it's 10 watts uh, accordingly to the Elecraft KX2. What kind of voltage do we see? 29.6. 29.6 volts so let's see it let's fix it so you see 29.6 so now let's calculate uh, the possible power 29.6 multiply 29.6 and we have 876 and we divide it by 100 and we have 8.76 watts i think it's 10 watts because i trust elecraft so but it's okay it's okay uh, as i said this is not a precise measurement it's more or less like you know to get an orientation in which direction you go with your output power so 8.7 watts or 10 watts indeed it's the same the same range of power so very nice let's make it like you know one watt let's start with one watt from 10 we go to one watt now we have one watt coming from the transceiver all right so and we see nine nine point two volts nine point two volts we have 
0 0.84 so almost one watt so we can be sure that it's you know around one watt more or less let's make it five watts most qrp power five watts and what do we have here so we have fixed 21.9 divided by 100 and we get 4.79 4.8 watts that's five watts i can say we can be sure we are at the five watts level so even if not very accurate but it's perfect measurement method so congratulations this dummy load is working power is measured and so dummy not even get warm everything's working just fine that's it that was one of my most fantastic experiments in my radio shack it could be that you don't have a oscilloscope you don't have tiny assay you don't have even a power meter swr power meter this could happen but you have this then and you have a multi-tester multimeter so and then you can perfectly measure your power output of your qrp transceiver with accuracy enough to be sure whether it's one watt whether it's five watts or it's around 10 watts as it works up to 20 watts probably you can measure you know even the output of, of such radios like g90 this is a very much recommended accessory to buy it's cheap you can buy it at qrp labs together with your qdx or qcx transceivers and then have it in one set in your backpack when you go outdoorsy so with this set thanks for watching peace and victory for ukraine see you in my next videos 73 this is linas limo yankee 2 hotel cheerio